Okay, so let's talk about what Git is. So Git is a version control system. It is open source, and it's the dis it's a of a type of distributed version control system. So basically, you're going to have different versions of your project that are going to be kept track of. It's going to track the changes to uh, any changes that you've made to the project over time, so that you can check your progress and see where you were and where you come. You could also revert back to an earlier version later on if you need to. And having software to do this for you automatically can save you a lot of time and it usually is something that will be handy that you will help you prevent from losing work over time or by <clears throat> mistakes from deleting files that you didn't mean to or forgetting what changes you made and things like that. So the reason it's a distributed version control system is it's there's some different versions like centralized and things like that with distributed each um, project you're working on or different people that might be working on it um, and the same project to have a local mirror or an exact copy of the project repository and to work on and that's what makes it a distributed version control system okay so let's look at the little picture here. We This is just showing a general distributed version control picture and we can have different um, people or different projects with the same version going on um, from the main repository or a project that they're working on and they can each have that little mirror image of the project where they can be editing their own files and doing their own work and they could eventually then push their changes back to the main repository or do a pull request if they don't have the rights to push it there. Um, and if it's accepted, if the, maybe the main person that's in charge of the main repository agrees with what they've done or appreciates their changes, um, they can then merge it into the main repository. And this version control system will keep track of all of this and be able to make sure that certain files that one person changed, the other person um, can't write over the same one and things like that. So it just really keeps track of all the different things going on with that. So exactly how does it work? So it's going to be taking um, little snapshots or versions of your project at different times. So each time you're at a certain current state that you're happy with, you'll do what's called a commit. And that's going to make this little snapshot of your project or the new next version of your project. And then as time goes on and any files that change, it's going to keep track of all of those. And then later, if you are happy with a new thing that you've added onto it, you can do another snapshot. So say this is your original working file that has all of your or folder that has all your files in it, maybe for a web application or a website. You know, it's got the JavaScript file and the CSS file and the HTML files. Everything's inside of here. It's getting kept track of. And you're happy at a certain point, so you take a little snapshot. And we'll call it commits later. And then as time goes on, you'll maybe take out a file here, add a folder here. And then at a certain point, you'll be like, okay, I'm happy with how it is looking now. And you'll take another snapshot of it. And you'll go from left to right and as to make changes go you'll go keep going on and making different snapshots. Now the reason the arrow is going backwards is because Git is very efficient. Once you've got that original commit only the changes have to be kept track of so it only has to remember that you deleted that file and added that folder. Everything else refers back to the original last commit that you did. So this little back button, it only has to, the second snapshot only has to keep track of only the things that changed. So it's very efficient in that every single time you don't have to commit every single file. It will just remember what's changed and then refer back to earlier versions to get all the other information. So that's why we're working from left to right, but it's these arrows are going backwards because it's saying, okay, these changes and everything else we had before. These changes and everything else we had before and everything else we had before. 
So that's kind of how Git works. So it's a very efficient in that it only has to keep track of each change, each the changes that were made every time you make a new version. Okay, so when we're working with a directory, um, say we've got a folder and it's got all of our our application in it or our website in it. Um, when we say we want to initialize this as a repository, it's not really changing any of our files or anything. It's just saying let's now include git and it's going to put like a little dot git folder with your project and what that's going to do is it's just metadata that's now going to start to keep track of your file. It's a database necessary for tracking all of the files inside of this folder, whatever project you told it for it to be a git repository. So basically this is where you're going to be working on things in this working directory. You're going to be editing files, you're going to be doing different things. Now if you get to a point where you want to make one of those snapshots, or one of those versions, then you will put whatever files you want to have included into that, into the staging area. So, for example, they've got an index file here. So maybe they were working on the index file and they were happy with where it was at, so they put it over into the staging area. Everything in the staging area is going to be included in the next snapshot or the next version or commit that you make. And then, once that commit's made, they'll all be pushed over into a new snapshot and the staging area will empty out. So probably the very first time you work on the um, working directory, you'll include all the files into your repository snapshot. And then from then on, only the ones that you edit and are happy with will you put into the staging area to then be a part of the next commit. Now you might think this is kind of an extra step. Why don't you just put everything into every single commit? But it actually saves you because if you are working on a certain file and you're not quite done with it, but then you've got your index that you've been working on and it's done and ready to go, you can leave the ones you're still working on in the working directory and only stage the ones that are complete to be included in the next commit. So it actually is kind of a nice step for you um, to be able to have files that you're still working on but you don't have to include in the next commit but you can go ahead and make a new version with what is working. So it is kind of an, um, an extra step but it's it's very helpful to you. Okay then there's branching. So if we've got different code that's being changed, uh, maybe two different types of edits that are going on, um, we're going to look at an example here where one person is working on fixing some bugs in the JavaScript or when I guess we better stick with just one person when we're doing it locally and maybe they're also bringing in fonts um, to change all their HTML pages to look a little different. So two different kind of projects going on at the same time. They're not sure either one's going to really work out for the project and they don't want to mess up the main the main files which they call the master branch. So they're going to take kind of a mirror copy of the entire master branch and they're going to then take that branch and work on it and do the edits for the photo gallery in this case and see how that looks without having to affect this master branch at all. If at the end at this point they like it and they think it looks great they can always merge it back up into the master branch if they like the changes. But at this point they weren't changing any of the master branch they were free to kind of experiment and test out with it and not mess up anything with the master branch. So that's kind of the beauty of branching um, and if you liked the branch you can always merge it back into the main branch later. It can be very powerful but can, it can also get complicated for example if you made two different branches off the master branch um, and you were working on two different co uh, edits completely but for some reason you're editing the exact same line of code differently in both branches. When you go to merge them both back in um, there could be a conflict, so you'll have to resolve any conflicts, but gets really handy. It will show you exactly what the two differences are, and you can choose which one you wanted to keep um, and resolve any conflicts that might come up. Um, but that's branching. It's a handy way to kind of experiment with different things that you're doing without messing up the main uh, master branch. Okay, and so far we've kind of talked about just the Git repository that would be on your local computer for you personally to be using as a, a web developer.
but you might want to work on a project with multiple people. And this is when it would be handy to have your repository online or in the cloud so that lots of people can see it. Now GitHub is a place where you can put your repository remotely online so that other people can see it. So Fred, Dave, and Lisa could be my, you know, miles and states and countries apart and they would still be able to work on the same project and have a little a mirrored repository of their own that they can work on locally on their computer and then they can push it or have a pull request to have it pulled back onto the main repository once they've made their changes. So this would be more for something you could set up privately for just your own team or you can have it publicly for anybody to see but then you're able to use this as a team and to make sure that the main um, team leader that's handling the main repository on GitHub can um, you know, bring in whatever changes they want, merge them in, and, and check that nobody's conflicting with each other, but they're all contributing to the same project. So that's how GitHub is a little bit different from Git. It's like a social media for, for coding and developing. Um, but you can all contribute to the repository using GitHub. All right, so we will see some examples of all of this. So we can have another look at exactly how this works um, in our next video.